Did you know that all correlation is not useful and that not all correlation can be used in data modeling? Keep watching to learn and understand about correlation in statistics. I'm Shreesh and you're watching Learning Puri, a channel for applied learning. On this channel, I share with you tips and tutorials on data science, business management, marketing and personal development. In this video, we will learn about correlation, the types of correlation, how to measure correlation, the different properties of correlation and statistical significance of correlation coefficient. I will also be sharing some tips on how to choose features using correlation for data modeling. So keep watching the video till the end so that you don't miss on these critical aspects about correlation in statistics and its usage in data modeling. Correlation comes from the word correlate, which when split up is a combination of co and relate. It means mutual relationship or connection between two things. Further, relationship is causal or is not established. Two things mean the relationship is bivariate. Causal means when one event is the cause for the other, a cause and effect relationship. To delve further, let's plot height and weight of different individuals on a graph. Do we see any pattern over here? We can observe some type of linear pattern in the data points. As the height increases, the weight tends to increase. Let's look at another example of plotting age of men versus the hair they have on their head. Here again, we see some kind of linear pattern, except that it points downwards and is not as steep as we saw in the previous example. The slope indicating how much strongly does one variable vary with reference to the other. So, when we are studying the direction and strength of an association between variables, we are looking at correlation. We, therefore, in statistics define correlation as a statistical technique to depict whether and how strongly a pair of variables are related with each other. Association is defined by the direction of association and the strength of the association. In a snapshot, there is some association between variables. There appears to be linearity in it. That is, there is a straight line relationship. The association has some directionality that is moving upwards or downwards. And we can observe some slope with more or less gradient. When a downward sloping graph of data is observed, we state that there is negative correlation between the variables. When an upward moving graph is seen, it means that the variables exhibit positive correlation. Finally, if the data points are randomly scattered or only one variable exhibits movement with the other variable staying more or less constant, we define such data as having no correlation. We can measure correlation with the help of correlation coefficient. The formula is as such. This is the Pearson's correlation coefficient. There are other metrics called Kendall's correlation coefficient and the Spearman's correlation coefficient. For this tutorial, we will stick to Pearson's formula. Here, n is the sample size or number of data points. x refers to different values taken by the x variable. y refers to different values taken by the y variable. And r is the correlation coefficient. The value of r always varies between negative 1 to positive 1. Values that are between 0 to greater than or equal to negative 1 indicate negative correlation. Values that are between 0 to less than or equal to positive 1 indicate positive correlation. A value of r equal to 0 indicates no correlation. Let's move to our example data on advertising spend versus the sales revenue obtained. The data is plotted in a scatter plot like so. Post running the correlation metric, we make the following observations. First, the entire scatter plot can be summarized into a single number that is 0.97. Second, the magnitude of R states the strength of the correlation. Third, the positive sign of the metric points to a positive correlation. Fourth, and finally, we also observe some linear association. These observations lead us to bust some myths that get formed around correlation. Myth number one. In the associated graphs, we see that both have a correlation coefficient of 0.82. Both have a slope with different magnitudes. However, the scatter in the first one is different from that in the second one. It therefore means that correlation indicates tendency of linearity in the association. However, it need not imply linearity. So, we should always be careful with correlation coefficient. It is the best practice to always plot the scatter diagram of the data. Myth number two. In this graph of age of men versus the amount of hair on their head, we see negative correlation and linear association. However, this definitely does not lead us to conclude that increasing age is the cause of hair loss amongst men. Hair loss can be caused due to other reasons like an infection, thyroid, autoimmune disease or medication that can happen even at an early age to anyone including men. Therefore, correlation does not indicate causation. Now that we have some clarity, let's learn some properties of correlation. 
For the first property, I have plotted four graphs using the same sample of data from our example on ad spend versus sales revenue. The first top left graph is the original data. The one below it is when the x variable was magnified 10 times. The one on top right depicts the graph when y values were scaled down 10 times. And finally, the one in the bottom right corner depicts the scatter when x values were incremented by 10. For all these scatter plots, we see the correlation coefficient is the same. That is 0.977. Therefore, we can safely surmise that any change of scale or origin on the data does not affect correlation coefficient. It also does not affect the scatter pattern of the data points. In this next example in the first chart, we have price of a vehicle on x-axis and horsepower of the engine on the y-axis. The y values are 10 times that of x values. The second graph has price on x-axis and fuel efficiency in miles per gallon on the y-axis. In both the graphs, the unit of measurement for the variables is different. The second property we observe is that the unit of measurement and the magnitude of variable does not impact the correlation coefficient variables. In both the cases, the correlation coefficient always stays between negative 1 to positive 1. This is a very important property when comparing two variables of different magnitude and units of measurement. It will always give a standardized output. Finally, we move on to an important part of the discussion, the statistical significance of correlation coefficient. The formula for calculating t statistic for the correlation coefficient is as such. Here, t refers to the calculated value of the t statistic using our data. r is the correlation coefficient and n is the sample size. The process is that we set up the null hypothesis. We state it mentioning that there is no relationship between two variables. Then, we calculate the t statistic and compare that value with the observed t value from the t table for the n minus 2 degrees of freedom. If t calculated is greater than t observed, then we do not reject the null hypothesis. Using this formula, we have found that a. Despite low values of correlation, we can still observe statistical significance between the two variables. b. The flip of the above statement is that high correlation need not be statistically significant since it can be based on a very small sample of data. And c. Therefore, the sample size plays a very important role. Finally, hence, along with statistical understanding, a solid and a strong understanding of the domain under study is necessary. These are very critical observations when we undertake data modeling and are trying to freeze on features to be included or excluded from the model. Understanding of correlation coefficient and statistical significance of the coefficient plays a very important role in data modeling. We use these three sets of information in choosing features that will be eventually used for data modeling. Whenever there is a clash in making a choice between variables that have low correlation coefficient but are statistically significant as against variables that have very high correlation coefficient but are not statistically significant, domain understanding comes into play. A good understanding of the domain along with correlation helps a data scientist take a well-informed decision on making a choice of features that will go into the machine learning model. This understanding will result in a far better and a robust machine learning model that can be utilized in resolving some critical business problems. So that's all for now in this video. I would like to call out to all the viewers to like this video and share it amongst your friends and acquaintances so that you can spread this knowledge. To know whenever I upload a video, click on the subscribe button and do not forget to click the notification bell. A small gesture will go a very long way. Till we meet again in the next video, stay healthy and stay peaceful.